Hi folks, this is all the fruit, and today I'm headed for the red spicata, the rarest and most precious coconut on the Canary Islands. I'm here in the beautiful Tenerife Palmetum, definitely the best botanic garden in all of the Canary Islands. They have a lot of coconuts here, but most are some tall green and tall yellow, most probably from Africa, most probably from the area of Senegal. A lot of them are openly accessible in the Palmetto, but the red spicata, it is hidden not behind one, but behind two fences. So now we are entering the inaccessible part of the Botanic Garden, which you should not enter without permission. Oh, come on, what's going on now? Okay, I'll close the door later. And even in this inaccessible part, there is another taller, spikier fence surrounding the red spicata. Well, we opened the fence. Why? Well, why did we open the fence? Because we checked on the red spicata and also did some work. Or basically the, the boss of the palmetum told the gardener what work to do and I watched. Well. Red spicata seems to be a great coconut variety, much better than all those than all those no-name coconuts in the Canary Islands. Basically, they are planted here just as ornamental, so it's enough for the people for the coconut trees to have nice leaves and a nice trunk. They don't even require them to have nuts or something. Well, they are not nuts but fruits. But the red spicata is supposed to be much better as a drinking coconut, and I think also as an eating coconut, and it's also supposed to do much better in the Canary Islands. This here is the original tree, and there is one single, one single sapling at the private garden of the, of the boss of the Palmetum, Mr. Carlo Morici. And now they are trying to make a lot more little saplings, that's why. The brown coconuts that fell to the ground here, they fell on their own account. They want to plant them. They also want to plant the nice plum coconuts up there as soon as they are ripe enough. Yeah, this is one coconut I'm not allowed to try. But, there is a big but. <laughs> yeah, I know how it sounds. I'm not allowed to try the, the good, the well-developed fruit because they are uh, all gonna be planted and hopefully some of them will develop into young coconut trees with tasty superior coconuts. What I'm allowed to try are the ones on the ground which the gardener cut off bunch-wise because they are no good anyways. Well, let's see, where is my knife? I should have taken it out before the video. Where is my knife? Here is my knife. I'm still with this low quality knife which is no good for opening coconuts. It's sufficient for most fruit but not for coconuts. Well this one looks nice and plump but it's no good. Mr. Morici explained me why so many coconuts in the Kedari Islands don't have well developed fruit. He said well they need one and a half years to ripen so basically they will always get one or two winters which is not good for a tropical plant. The mangoes, for example, he said they just need a couple months to ripen, so when they flower in spring and ripen in summer autumn, for them it feels like in the tropics. The coconuts, they got stunned by the cold winters. One winter is bad enough, two winters are even worse. I guess something like this happens, but they get stunned at the beginning of their development. Nothing good develops. If they get stunned later in their development, they are still good as drinking coconuts, but they will not develop the flesh. This is as far as I understood what he explained to me. And so those two bunches, the gardener just cut them off like 20 minutes ago in order to preserve all the energy for the good coconuts, for the nice big plum coconuts, which we are not going to eat because, well, they are an investment in the future. In a couple years or decades, when we have a couple dozen plants, there will be a lot more to it. So I'm not going to open any of those. 
But I'm gonna open a couple of the bad ones. He said sometimes you are lucky and find something in there. Well, here is one. It is quite nice and big and plump, but it's light. So I guess there will not be much inside, but still. Oh, come on. We need a bigger rock. Okay, I totally flattened it. What is inside? Well, there is at least a little hard shell and, oh, there is even flesh. Mm. Mm. Well, let's hope you can see something now. I put down the phone. Huh. Yeah. I already saw such coconuts on Lanzarote and those on other islands. Look at that. A lot of fibers. There is also a hard shell. And in the hard shell, there is a little bit of flesh, but no sap. So, at least we are gonna eat. As far as I remember, the red spicata is mostly a drinking coconut. Yeah, it looks quite strange inside. A lot like a geode. Mm. The coconut flesh or the endocarp develops just in some patchy areas. Look at that up here. Just a couple little crumbs. They are not loose. They are all attached. That's where they originated. That's where they got formed. And they are still firmly attached to the shell or the mesocarp. I think the only endocarp part worth eating is down here. But yeah, they taste like they taste like coconut. So this one, not a complete fail, just a 90% fail. Now let's try those here. Funny thing is, even in such coconuts I sometimes found something worth eating and sometimes even tiny elongated spindle-like coconut shells which can be quite interesting for decoration oh yeah well this coconut shell in here is definitely very small see here there is just a little bit of mesocarp, a little bit of stuff that's getting hard. <coughs> Let's try one more. Well, same thing. Just a tiny piece of hardened material inside. Well, folks, this was the trash from the red spicata, which I was allowed to process, not the good ones. Here you can hear the, you can hear the coconut water, and if you can hear the water, there will also be flesh. But we'll leave this for the future. We'll come back in a couple years and eat a lot of red spicata coconuts. Well... Finally, we got a, an explanation on why there are so many misshaped and underdeveloped coconuts here in the Canary Islands. That's good. Finally, we got to try at least a half misshapened red spicata. Well, folks, this was the red spicata. In a couple of years, we'll try good ones here in the Canary Islands when we have more trees. For now, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful island of Tenerife. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.